Welcome back to Girl Talk. We're filming on site at Bella Domicile in Fitchburg. And later on, we will chat with the folks here. They're giving back to the community, and we'll see and learn how they're doing that. But moving on, uh, parents, we know that it's hard sometimes when it comes to hiring a caregiver. There's a lot to think about, including taxes. Mm -hmm. And unless you're a tax expert, you probably have a lot of questions. So here to help us today is Nicole Broyles. She's with Broyles and Company CPAs. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So hiring a nanny, there's a thing called the nanny tax. There is. Tell us about it. It generally refers to the federal taxes associated with having a household employee. And it's called the nanny tax, but it's not necessarily just for nannies. Mm -hmm. If you have any sort of household employee, if you have a maid coming in, if you have a full-time gardener, if you have mm -hmm. um, an aging parent who you have, health care workers coming in, health aides, maybe uh -huh. someone staying in the home you know, for the majority of the day while you're at work to care for your parent, that are all subject to the nanny tax. And that is Social Security and Medicare taxes at a minimum that you're required to withhold from the employee, from the individual providing the service, as well as what you have to pay. As for, the employer. Exactly. Uh -huh. Right. And so how does that actually get paid then? Who pays the nanny tax and when? You uh, pay it as part of your individual income tax return. Okay. And uh, you withhold it from the employee, the Social Security and the Medicare taxes, and if they elect, they could also have federal and state taxes withheld from their wages if they oh, so okay. chose. So then you would be responsible for remitting those as well. Uh, all the federal is paid through your individual income tax return. So you may need to make some estimated tax payments. Then the state side, you actually have to set up a state account with Wisconsin Department of Revenue and possibly pay state unemployment tax, depending on the amount of wages that you've paid. Wow. Uh, the nanny tax kicks in once you pay any individual over $2,000 in a year or $1,000 in a quarter. Wow. So Is anyone else's head spinning? Yes. <laughs> Glazing over. Right, no. yes. But I'm just thinking, you know, it's, you know, it's challenging when you, let's say you are dealing with an aging parent mm -hmm. or, you know, potentially a caregiver with Alzheimer's or something like that. There's probably a lot on your plate already. Yes. So all of these details then are, are probably a little bit daunting. Yes, right. it can be very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are some exceptions. For instance, if you have your child who is under 21 caring for younger kids or maybe doing the caregiving for the parent. Okay they're not subject to this nanny tax. So put your older um, kids to work. <laughs> interesting. So I know you kind of talked about how it's paid a little bit. Mm -hmm. and like you said, Jess, it's a lot of information. So is there a place people can go to kind of see how to, the steps to take or contact you guys, Certainly. obviously? Certainly, yes. Um, the IRS has a wonderful publication on their website okay. specifically dedicated to household employment taxes. And so it's a great resource for walking you through how it's done and, and what needs to be filed. Uh, there are numerous forms that will have to be filed. Uh, if you hire someone, you have to confirm they are eligible to work and they mm -hmm. have to complete an I-9 and provide proof of identity. They have to um, file a Schedule H as part of your individual tax return to pay those taxes. Then there's the W-2 that you have to submit to the employee at the end of the year and then submit that to the Social Security Administration. Um, and then, of course, the state's forms. So wow. there's a whole slew. Yeah, so hearing about this whole slew, I can see how that could be discouraging for some folks mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. even kind of bother. Right. So what are the benefits other than maybe avoiding getting audited down the road? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly more of the benefit is with the employee. They have then a W-2 that they can use to apply for a loan. They have um, then potentially eligible for earned income credits. But the benefit for you is that then you're eligible to take the child care credit. If you didn't have proof of payment to that individual, you wouldn't be eligible for that credit. And then the deduction on Wisconsin's return for paying for child care. So there's some benefits for both. Sure. It's not just taxes, it's also credits. Yes. So, mm -hmm. tax credits, I suppose. <laughs> so that's good to know. And then what is the due date then? Is this just all part of your regular tax payment? Yes, okay. due April 15th, along with all your other individual income tax forms and such, it's all paid then. Um, and the state, if you have those requirements for filing, the state unemployment is due on a quarterly basis. So okay. that's actually then due. I was April. gonna say finally an easy part. It's just like part of the taxes, but no, then you've got the state. Okay, yes. so that's on a quarterly basis. It, for unemployment, if you have state withholding that you're taking from their paycheck, then those could be monthly, maybe even quarterly. Gotcha. Wow. So if you have a household employee, yeah. uh, the nanny tax is something you might want to take a look at. Maybe get some help from Nicole mm -hmm. over at Broyles and Company CPAs. They're in Middleton. We'll be right back with Girl Talk right after this.